Hey guys, welcome back. Now, the set looks totally different, I know. Uh, I've been shooting in my room uh, for the last few months uh, because my wife has been using this table, you know, as her office desk or work from home office. Um, but to fully review this, this is the Toughbook 55 from Panasonic. Uh, but to fully show everything about this laptop, I need a lot more space. So I told my wife, look, I, I need the table back. But she was so supportive uh, and she was more than happy to clear everything. Yeah. So yeah, this is the tough book. Now, laptops over the years from the 90s and all that, um, the main aim is to get them lighter, thinner, and of course, more powerful. Uh, but Panasonic has done a bit of a 180. This is the tough book, and this looks closer to a laptop from the 90s than it does from 2020 or 2019, late 2019 when this uh, laptop was released. But there's a very, very cool thing about this. Now, this is called a tough book. For very good reason. Now, this is what Panasonic calls a semi-rugged uh, laptop. Although, looking at the specs of this laptop, it is definitely very, very rugged. Now, the reason why they call it semi-rugged is because there is another Toughbook called the Toughbook 31, and that is like their full, like the highest tier uh, rugged laptop. All right, and like I said, something very special about this laptop, but to talk about all of this, I actually had to print out everything. God, there's way too much to remember. But anyway, looking at the, the main specs of the machine, so this comes with a Core i5 V Pro. I'm not gonna go too much into the V Pro, but basically it's more of an enterprise thing, more for uh, IT managers to have better control over the laptop, uh, to help remotely and all that. But anyway, if you wanna find out more about that, go Google that. Okay, and it has eight gigabytes uh, of RAM, but and that can be upgraded all the way to 64 gigabytes of RAM. For your storage options, you got all the way down from 256 gigabytes all the way to one terabyte, but we'll talk more about the variation in storage later on. Now, this laptop is full of features. It is amazing, even though it looks like a 20, 30 year old laptop. Now, first of all, this uh, webcam here is not your regular webcam, all right? It supports Windows Hello, all right, which is fantastic. So I can actually log in with the, my face. It also has a built-in uh, webcam cover. You know, sometimes when you buy a laptop, we tend to buy those things to cover the laptop for privacy. This one has it built in, so that's pretty cool. Now, one thing that sort of blew me away was the fact that this laptop, even though it's super rugged, it's super tough, and the screen looks like any other normal screen, but it is actually touchscreen, which is really cool. So it's got a full HD touchscreen, and it's not just a touchscreen that's really cool. It is one of the brightest screens I have ever seen on any laptop. It, it has uh, a brightness of a thousand nits, all right? You heard me right, a thousand nits. Now, it also has one of the loudest speakers I've ever seen on any laptop. Uh, it's got four mic array on this laptop. So you might be wondering what is going on? Why are there so many of these things on the laptop? Now, the Toughbook series is not meant for the average consumer, all right? Uh, it's meant more for really harsh conditions. So for example, uh, if you work in construction and you're always around things that can cause a lot of damage to the laptop, uh, this is definitely the laptop for you. You get a lot of scientists as well when they go to really harsh conditions, really cold areas, really hot areas, and they need to do work and they definitely need a laptop while they're there, they also use this. Now, like I said, it's really tough. Now, the entire body on the outside here, this is not your usual like metal or plastic. This is a magnesium alloy. So one really cool thing about this is that even though it's really bulky, surprisingly, it is not that heavy. It comes in at about 2.2 kilograms uh, for the full HD touchscreen option. The one without the full HD is slightly less, but it's negligible. But basically 2.2, honestly, it's a lot lighter than it looks. Of course, it has all sorts of water resistance, dust resistance, even the sides where you have all your um, IO pods, and we'll talk about the IO pods later, they are all covered with this sort of flat. Can you see it? Yeah, so it's covered with this, all this sort of flat to cover from dust and water and everything. And it's not just about the ruggedness of the laptop, it is also about the harsh conditions that it can, it can, it can weather. So there are two sort of standards. One is operating temperatures and storage temperatures that it can withstand. So operating temperatures, meanwhile, is turned on and using, it can, it can be used at temperatures as high as 50 degrees Celsius and as low as 10 degrees, oh, I'm sorry, minus 10 degrees Celsius, all right? And for storage means I can close the laptop and put it somewhere in that particular place. It can be as, as hot as 60 degrees Celsius and minus 20 degrees Celsius. So that means that if I had this laptop and I was in winter, I could sit down somewhere in the park at minus 10 degrees and I can use the laptop. 
I would probably freeze to death, but the laptop would be fine. Now, everything here is really about the whole theme about it being really rugged and being used in very harsh conditions. Now, in this sort of scenarios, what are you thinking? Like, first of all, it's going to be, it might be really hot, might be really cold. Um, even like visually, it might be really hard. So that's why if let's say you're out in the sun all day and it's blazing hot and it's really bright, that's why it has a thousand nits so that regardless of the conditions, it can still be seen. And it's not just about it being really bright. It has probably the widest range of dark to bright, okay? So it can go all the way up to a thousand nits. And if you see here, I'm gonna bring it up all the way to like a hundred. So this is the brightest. And let me tell you, it might not look bright on camera, but it is super bright right now. I've got all sorts of studio lights pointing at me. And in really dark scenarios, if let's say you're in the military and you needed to use a laptop out in the jungle or something, but you can't have it shining and giving away your position, it can go all the way down. And now it is actually still showing, but I think in the camera, is it showing? Yeah, you can't even see in the camera, but if I look really closely, I can sort of see. And right now you can't, but at night, it will be just nice for you to see without it shining on anything. Okay, and in terms of connectivity, it didn't skimp out on anything as well. It supports wi Wi-Fi up to wireless AC. Uh, it supports Bluetooth 5.0. It even has inbuilt GPS and not just a normal GPS, it's your regular GPS. It also has something called GLONASS that is something used in Russia. Uh, and U-Blocks N-E-O-M-8-N. I'm not quite sure what that is, but all I know is that it's used predominantly in China. Now, one other thing you have to consider when you are out in the field or doing research at some uh, harsh climate, you probably have nowhere to charge your laptop, which is why they have pulled all the stops to make sure that this uh, laptop lasts. Now, this laptop will last up to 20 hours, all right, according to some benchmarks, all the way up to 20 hours, but that can actually be doubled. And if you're wondering how, now this laptop, one of the reasons why it's so big, and I'm not sure if you can see it from here, it's modular, all right? So, <laughs> you're right, modular. So there are so many ways that you can upgrade or swap out different components uh, to, to sort of suit your needs to what you want to do. And special thanks to Panasonic, they didn't just send a few, they sent almost every single accessory that is available. So let's see what we have, all right? Honestly, I haven't gone through any of this yet. So first thing here is an IO pack. So I think it's one of the accessories that you can add to add like inputs and outputs over here. What else do we have? We have another IO pack. Okay, so we'll see what those IO packs are. We have a, a Blu-ray disc. <laughs> it's a Blu-ray disc drive in case you want to watch a movie while you're on Mount Vesuvius. But anyway, what else? We have, ah, the battery pack. So that's what I was talking about. So earlier on, I said that you could get up to 20 hours of battery, which is amazing on its own. Add this in, it doubles it to 40 hours, all right? So that's incredible. You can basically spend more than a day out and your laptop won't die. All right, what else? We have an RFID reader, very cool. We have a smart card reader, also very nice. Actually, what's the difference between a smart card and an RFID? Oh, I guess one is slot in with a chip and the other one is a tap. Uh, another IO pack, okay. So we got three IO packs. What else do we have? A fingerprint reader, all right, very cool. And there's another one, two, three, four, five, six boxes. So we still got plenty more. All right, a DVD drive. So it's either DVD or Blu-ray. We have a SSD pack, all right? So remember I said that it could be uh, upgraded. It, it can be all the way down for 256, can go all the way up to one terabyte. So we have one 512 gigabyte here. We have, we should have a few of these drives. Okay, so this is the 256, which is already, it already has 256 internal, right? So you can probably add to it. This has a one terabyte, so 256512, one terabyte. A GPU pack, ah, we'll talk about this a bit later. But anyway, yeah, so let's clear these boxes. I, we're not gonna go through all of them. We're just gonna go through the ones that I'm excited about. All right, so let's see that Blu-ray drive. That's incredible. Okay, so... Man, it's like a laptop Lego. All right, so yeah, your regular drive. So it's a Blu-ray drive. That's very cool, actually. And yeah, it's not just movies. I believe there are Blu-ray drivers, or sorry, Blu-ray writers as well. So you could write Blu-ray this with more capacity, but then why wouldn't you just have a hard disk? So all I have to do is pull this up, I guess. Is there a latch? Ah, yes. Okay, so there is a catch here. And this is the plastic holder piece. 
Now I'm doing this while the laptop is still on, all right? So I don't know if this is hot swappable, meaning whether I can, it will read it while it's turned on or whether I will need to restart it. Let's see. Let's check and see whether it reads it immediately. No, it doesn't. So we'll probably have to reboot. Okay, so we've rebooted the machine. And like I said, it's got Windows Hello. So if I put my face, it should log me in. Yep, cool, log me in immediately. Very quick, actually. Yep, it does now. So you've got C drive and you've got your Blu-ray drive as well. Cool. So let's see what one of the IO packs are. So we have this one here. It says USB plus five screws. I don't know. Ah, there you go. So this goes under the laptop. And then when you remove this, you've got extra slots here. So this would go here? No. So it would go here? No. Where does this go? 2000 years later. Oh, it goes here. Okay, so if you look here, there are two screws. Okay, another screw here. So this would actually go like this. And I don't have my screwdriver, so I can't really replace it, but that's fine, you get the picture. And this one has a USB, USB 3, okay? And it has a VGA plus a serial port, okay? Uh, serial port, yes, is still being used, mostly with networking or controlling other hardware devices. Oh, and by the way, you've got another one here. So you've got a USB 3, a HDMI port, and a USB type C. Oh no, what is that? I'm not quite sure what that is. Oh, it's a SIM card slot. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You can actually put a SIM card in and you get 4G LTE. It supports 4G LTE, by the way. So we've got this one here. Let's see what the other... I'm not going to install it on the laptop, but let's just see what other IO packs they have. So here it is. This is the one. Okay, so let's remove it. Okay, yeah. So you got a LAN port here and over here. Okay, so VGA and serial again. I thought it has a LAN port here already. Yeah, it has one here. So I guess you could add an additional LAN port. I'm not quite sure why, but that's cool, I guess. And I hope I can keep track of this and I don't lose anything. Okay, this one, same thing. So all of these have a VGA and a serial port. Whereas this one is... What is this? I honestly don't know. I don't... Is it a PS2? Any of you guys, if you've seen this port before, let me know. I don't... It's... I'm pretty sure it's not PS2. I'm not quite sure what this port is, but do let me know. Uh, drop me a comment below to let me know whether you know what this port is. I honestly have no clue. Uh, we've got an RFID reader. Man, this is huge just for RFID reader. Okay, so if you look here, this is another, again, it's another placeholder. Do I need to unscrew it? Well, I can't take it up. Anyway, so this goes in here and then it would be like, like this. This would stick out and then you can use this tap. And another thing, all right, so like the hard drives, right? Oh my God, it's full of stuff. Panasonic, I really hope that everything goes back in the same box. I apologize if they don't. Okay, so this is one of the hard drives actually. So it goes in the same uh, bay as the optical drive and the GPU. Uh, so I guess it's an additional. You don't have to take out the SSD. You can put this in for an additional one terabyte. So that's pretty cool. Let's look at the GPU. This GPU should be an AMD Radeon Pro WX4150. Not the most powerful, uh, but not, not like a useless graphic card either. It's not bad. I'll, I'll, I'll put some of the uh, benchmark to some games over here or here. I don't know where. But anyway, if you look here, it actually has a cooling fan, which is pretty cool for your GPU. Cool. Mm -hmm. But if you put it down, where is the exhaust fan going to go? Ah, uh, okay. So basically at the bottom here so when you plug this in here the fan will be right at this hole so it can cool the gpu okay so we decided to clean up a bit uh we we're getting too many boxes and i was a bit worried that we will get messed up so these are all the, it's it's crazy the amount of of other modules that you can add in but i wanted to add this show you this one first so this is what i mentioned about the battery right so like i said internally already um it has about 20 hours of battery life and which can be doubled so this is that same battery pack so it goes in here i believe no is it here yeah here and here either one of those it fits in like that and automatically from 20 it becomes 40 incredible okay so yeah that's pretty much all the accessories or modules i'm not quite sure what you call them but absolutely incredible panasonic basically thought of everything kudos to you guys now, one thing, again, I'm not sure whether it's just me, but I feel like the keys or the numbering and the letters on each key looks a bit thicker than usual. Like normal laptops, I think the font is a bit thinner. This is thicker. I think it's also got to do with it being rugged. So that's pretty cool. 
Um, even here, if you look here, so it has a couple of LEDs, but because you might add an additional battery, they actually have two uh, indicators here to show you whether it's using battery one or battery two or whether both are charging, so that's pretty cool. Oh, and I almost forgot this. Now, when I said that Panasonic thought of everything, they really thought of everything, all right? Now, something this heavy, you know, sometimes it might you might not be able to hold it like how you would hold a normal, uh, like a normal laptop like this or like this and walk around, you might not have the hands. So they have a handle. This is so cool. <laughs> I haven't seen this on any laptop. It's amazing. And yeah, it's also metal. It is not plastic. So this is not going to break. So let's talk about the price of the laptop. Now, this particular spec without accessories, right? We're not talking about buying the additional accessory. I don't have all the prices of all of them. Uh, the price of the laptop itself at the base model. So I believe that's 256 gigabyte SSD. Uh, Core i5b Pro and I think 8 gigabytes of RAM that comes in at about oh sorry and with the full HD touch screen so not not the, the normal screen so I'm talking about a touch screen model right that comes in at about US 2605 uh, which I believe rough estimate is about 3005 Singapore so it's not cheap so obvious question I always ask should you buy this laptop now if you're an everyday user you don't go anywhere harsh you're, you're not one of those who like work in construction or do research in some volcano in italy or something no there's there's no reason for you to get this but for those people who do need something like this i can't think of any laptop that does it better uh, than the panasonic toughbook series and like i said this isn't the only one there's also the toughbook 31 that's so, that sort of brings it up a dial i believe like even the screen goes up to like 1200 nits uh, there are a lot more things that take it one step further, but this one already, even though they call it semi-rugged, it is easily the most rugged laptop I have ever seen. All right, and that about wraps up my review of the Panasonic Toughbook 55. Now, if you like this video, you know what to do, and I would love it if you would subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to receive notifications on our next video. I'm JP, and I'll see you real soon.